Do you guys know how many flies I could have bought with the amount of money that I spent on fly tying materials, but it wouldn't be near as much fun. Catching fish on the flies that you tie is really special. What's up guys, Steve. Um, we're off the river. It was ripping out there, man. The wind was blowing. They said, seriously, it said 40 miles per hour through the canyon. So as you can see, I'll, I'll show, I'll probably put together this, uh, make this like a two part video, but the wind was actually lifting my indicator up off of the water. And, and so it was just, so then I tried a little bit of tight line nymphing there towards the end, um, which I'm, I'm practicing, trying to get good at. Anyways, guys, um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. We're going to whip up a little caddis pattern here. Just a, a fly that I, I kind of made up a while back that's been good for me. So hope you guys enjoy. Let's tie a fly. I'm trying a different camera angle tonight. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I got on macro here, trying to keep it in field stand focus. But anyways, guys, we're starting with the Gamagatsu size 16 caddis hook. Um, we're going, and then we've got a blue wing olive tungsten slotted bead, 2.4 millimeter. And we're gonna tie up a. I'm gonna just do a quick fly here. Um, we're using a unithread. This is, I believe, this is a dot. Uh, I don't get real technical when it comes to this, guys. I'm just a beginner fly tire, but I hope you guys enjoy this. So we're gonna put down our base here. And these beads, I really, I've come to like these. I was buying some beads um, at another shop, and uh, they were pretty expensive. As you guys know, tungsten is very expensive, especially bass weights. And um, I found these, I believe on Amazon, and they're tungsten, they're slotted. You get a pack of 25. They've got different sizes, different colors. But I'll link them down in the description in case you guys are interested in them. But I'm just going to put down a base thread here. Just a base about three quarters of the way back to the bend of the thread. And bring this back up. Just build the back of this up just a little bit. Um, now we're going to take some uh, chartreuse silly legs. You can also take, um, if you don't have silly legs, what I did guys is I started, when I started fly tying, I'm still in the starting phases, but this is all just from um, old spinner baits and, and chatter baits that I had, and it works great for making attractor fly bodies. And um, like here's a piece of the, you know, the chartreuse for making UV flies. So we're gonna take take a piece of that. And we're just gonna cut it at an angle, and then I just lay that against the base of the hook. Just see how easily it captures that the point of that. Just wrap this back to where the thread ends and then come back forward. Put that in our keeper for a minute. Um, the next thing we're going to use, guys, is it's like a flashaboo um, in a brown, it's a brown sparkle. I picked this up at Walmart uh, real cheap. Um, I do, I do recommend that you guys support your local fly shops, but if you're just getting started in fly tying, and I say, I, I say, I recommend that you guys do. It's a lot of fun. Start out with just some, you know, just pick yourself up a cheap vice and cheap materials or borrow a vice. And uh, see if you like it. Tie some real easy, easy flies like some zebra midges or something. So we're just going to, so I'm capturing this now and I'm going to bring it down. And come back up. All the way to just a little bit behind the head. I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to go ahead and give this an overhand because I don't trust this vise. Um, this vise is really old. I think it was... It came from my grandpa. So anyways, I, I was told that it might possibly be an old Orvis vise, but it's... It, we did some research and it's not. So I want to get a good vise. So let me know what advice I should get, guys. I just I'd like to spend maybe like 150 bucks on a, a good um, rotating vise. But anyway, so now we're gonna take and we're gonna take our um, so now we're gonna take our stretchy silly leg material here. 
and we're just going to wrap it. It's going to kind of pull, pull tight when you're starting out as you get towards the middle or the back. Uh, take a little bit of tension off and just one in front of the other, one in front of the other, just keep wrapping it forward. Kind of make that, create that segment and as you get towards the front, pull a little bit tighter just to keep that shape. I'll wind up our, wind up my bobbin. Uh, two or three wraps, had this stuff come loose. Cut that off. Now we're going to take our flash of boo and we're going to wrap it the same direction because I'm going the same direction because I want to pull it into those those grooves in between just to create a segment to create that segmented body look. Doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you get some get some good segments on there. Let's hold that. Wind up my thread here. And give that a back wrap. Another back wrap. And get in front of it. There we go. Got it that time. I'm just going to trim this off. And give it a couple more wraps here. Kind of work my way back towards so like now guys we're gonna take some gonna take some goose by it to okay and so we're just gonna take the goose by it I like it so the goose I like to make the by it kind of curve in uh, starting about the middle give it just one just one or two wraps and then take your second by it See, they have a curve to them. They kind of curve up or in. So I like to make sure that they're curving in towards the fly. And just give them one or two overhand loose wraps so that way you can work with it. We'll get this straightened out here. That looks pretty even. Give that a couple wraps. Trim the bite. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit, it's going to get covered up. Give that a couple tight wraps. It takes the all olive brown ice dub my favorite color take some dubbing mix it up in your fingers Pull up inch about an inch down half of an inch create a dubbing noodle twist your top finger clockwise your bottom finger counterclockwise I'm gonna give it a couple wraps here just bring it towards the head I like to kind of cinch it down and make sure it's nice and clean. I'll just kind of break that off right there. Pull this back. I'm going to a couple of tight wraps behind the head. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a whip finish. Yeah, guys, let me know what vice I should get. I really want to get me in a... I think I get one more here. I really want to get me a good vice. I mean, I, I enjoy tying flies and making bass crappie jigs. And, um, and this vice, it slips sometimes. That's why I push that back with my nail just a little bit. 
center down. And let's cut it. Now we're gonna take, you can either take, um, you can purchase a, a dubbing brush. You can buy some extra, and this is industrial strength uh, Velcro. And if you stick a piece of this on the end of a popsicle stick, it works great. Um, or I've got, I've got here a soft, soft bristle wire brush. And so I'm just gonna pull just a few of these fibers out. Be careful not to get into the wing. Be careful not to get in the thread. And then the other side. The thing I like about this is a soft brush on the side here works good too. So then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim this just above the hook. And that just creates, you know, your antennas, legs coming out. Kind of looks like an emerger. Um, so the next step, guys, is we're going to take some uh, Loom UV Clear. And this is in thick. This stuff is amazing. I highly recommend it. And we're just going to run a fine, a real fine bead over the back of this fly. Okay, let that suck back in. And then we'll just start it. I just want to pull it over the back and then I like to create just a little hump over the head and then down. Kind of gives it a nice shape there. I'll take this, sorry about that, I'll take this uh, and just kind of work it towards the back of the hook. Take our UV light make sure it's how I want it and we'll hit it with the UV light and if you guys haven't used this this loom UV resin they have thick fluorescing and thin and then they have water based and now they have different colored uh, colors which is really cool I want to get some of that but it stays pliable and you can work with it until you hit it with this UV light but I'll link all this stuff like I said down below if you guys want to check it out, if not, that's, you can use fingernail polish like I used to use. It works too. But that's it, guys. That's a little, uh, little kind of a UV caddis pattern. You can see how that those ribs really just pop with that UV. So if you can imagine the fly floating through the river and the sun's lights, sun rays are hitting it. You got that purple back. I don't know, this fly's just caught me a lot of fish, and it's just a fly that I made up one day um, with spinnerbait materials, <laughs> bass fishing stuff. So that's it, guys. I appreciate you watching. This is Steve from Black Fly signing out, and I will see you guys on the next episode.